okay ladies and a few guys um i want to talk about the banana situation from the other day i want to let you know what ended up happening hopefully you were able to watch that long video all the way through as i was doing my inner work and uh you know inner work takes time it's it's not always fast so if you guys watch all the way through i know the video was more than an hour and i was finally able to get in touch with the part of myself that knew exactly what i needed to do to get through that trigger so i want to let you know uh, i want to update you on what ended up happening it was it was really it was really cool it was really great so um after i hung up the video with you guys and I knew exactly what I was gonna say to this man, exactly how I was gonna word it. I had gotten myself into, into an intense state of gratitude and responded from that space. And I wrote down everything I was gonna say and I started rehearsing it the same way I was gonna say it to him, okay? From a place of love, from a place of gratitude, not from the space I was in, when I started the video, when I was triggered and I was offended and I, and I was worried and I was scared. Um, so I got into the space of gratitude and um, I made up my response from there. So um, I was home alone that day, as you saw in the video, he was not there. And he had told me that he didn't have any money and he wanted me to go buy the bananas myself with my own money. And that like really triggered me. Um, so I ended up going to the nail salon that day. And um, when I was finished, I had, um, I had him pick me up and I was like already, okay, for like the rest of that day, I was rehearsing in my mind what I was gonna say to him and how I was gonna say it. So um, the more I rehearsed it, the more I made it very real, I was, acting as if I was that woman that would respond in a way like that. Like I was coming from the mentality of that type of woman. Okay. So that would basically be like my higher self, like a better version of me, a more evolved version of me and my quantum self, whatever you want to call it. So I kept rehearsing that in my mind and out and out loud. And, um, by the time it was time for him to come pick me up from the nail salon, like I was in the mental and emotional space of gratitude and ready to talk to him about it and tell him everything I needed to say. So he picked me up and then as we were driving back to the house, he's like, oh, hold on. And he pulls over and he goes in the store, okay? I had not said anything to him yet. I said nothing to him. It was just, you know, just a very short amount of time passed from the time he picked me up to where he wanted to stop at the store. So he pulled over, he left me in the car. He just ran in really fast and he came out with the bananas. And I was like, holy crap. I didn't even have to say anything. I was vibrating on the frequency of getting my desire, like having my need met. I was coming from the space of gratitude when he showed up to pick me up and probably even before he picks me up, he could feel my energy. I didn't even have to speak the words that I had rehearsed all day. I had become the person and I was living in the wish fulfilled. Okay, there was no doubt in my mind by that point that he was not going to provide for me. Maybe not exactly that day if he truly didn't have the money, but in my mind, I was playing it out like, okay, well then you can get him for me tomorrow or as soon as you get paid or whenever it is. like. I believe, I assume, I don't know if any of you guys follow anything um, to do with, there's my stutter again, you guys. For those of you who are watching, who have never watched me before, I'm a person who stutters and I stutter in my videos 
and I don't edit them out. I use special breathing techniques to get through the word blocks and the stutters. So sometimes you're gonna hear me talking a little funny. So yeah, um, oh my God, what was I saying now? So if you follow Neville Goddard, then you know what I'm talking about, like the law of assumption, or if you follow the law of attraction, anything along those lines or you're into manifestation, you'll know what I'm talking about. Like I basically entered the vibration and the frequency of where I wanted to be in life and in the relationship. And I didn't even have to explain anything to him. I don't know if it was just a crazy coincidence that he just decided to go buy the bananas anyway, even though he said that he wasn't going to or that he couldn't, or if all the inner work I had done all day actually worked. This has been happening to me a lot lately. I've been doing a lot of scripting and manifesting, and the more I'm doing it, the faster and the better it's working. Like I'm, you know, I'm really, I'm building up the muscle for manifestation. So I thought that was really awesome. He just went and he bought the bananas and he handed them to me and I never had to say anything to him. I mean, of course, you know, I was very grateful and expressed my gratitude and everything. Um, but I just thought you guys might like to know that. Like I was really upset in the beginning of the day over that whole situation. And then I did the inner work and then I got exactly what I wanted. I got the bananas, but it wasn't the bananas I wanted. I wanted the feeling of the man providing for me. I wanted a man that was happy to provide for me because I could have, you know, snapped at him. I could have said a lot of, you know, like mean defensive things to him. And I still could have gotten the bananas or I could have just went and bought my own bananas, but I wouldn't have gotten the relationship I wanted. I wouldn't have gotten the polarity and the relationship between the masculine and the feminine. And I wouldn't have gotten a happy guy that was trying to provide for me. Okay. I mean, that's what I really actually wanted. And when I went into the state of gratitude, which if you didn't watch the first video, you can go back and watch it. Um, you can see how I went from a triggered state into a state of gratitude and then figured out how I was going to respond from there. So I thought that was really awesome. I was really happy. It worked out that way. Um, I took some notes here. Hold on one second. Yeah, so I was basically in the vibration of love, gratitude, and receiving because I played it out in my mind and verbally and I scripted it for the next several hours that day until I saw him and then all of a sudden, poof, it was like magic. I was getting everything I was assuming. So that was great. Um, oh, <laughs> And this is like the sweetest, like, it's kind of sweet, kind of sad. Um, so when he said he didn't have any money, he really didn't have any money. I was thinking maybe because he put this ring on my finger that maybe this was like, you know, like how some men like to do. They get engaged just so they can have access to your wealth. You know, well, they want access to the woman's body for one, and two, he wants access to her money. And that was like the first place my mind went to when he said he didn't have money. Because it was very coincidental that he put the ring on my finger and then the very next morning he couldn't even buy me bananas. <laughs> like, oh God, I was just like, oh, it was cringing. And I was just, I felt so tricked and trapped and so defensive and afraid. But anyway, when he went and bought those bananas, he literally scrounged change from his car to go and buy them. Like he didn't have any money. <laughs> he was scrounging change from his car to go and buy the bananas for me. 
So, um, oh, and when we got back to the house, right? Like normally when we eat at night, you know, like we'll cook a nice meal, you know, he'll buy some things, he'll cook for me and like he'll buy me some wine and he'll buy himself a few beers, okay? I drink wine, he drinks a beer. Um, what I also noticed that night was he never bought any beer for himself. And I still had some wine from the other day, but he would have bought beer for himself. He literally didn't have any money. And um, I mean, he didn't even have the beer. He usually drinks at night. And then what made it even sweeter, I think, that made it more like meaningful is that like he could have gone and bought himself beer and been like, I don't have money for your bananas. But what I'm recognizing here is the provider trait that even if I don't have money, okay, I still provide for my woman. She's still very high up there on my list of priorities. And, you know, I really appreciated that. Like he's not a wealthy man. He's not, he's not rich. He's not wealthy. He bought my bananas when he didn't have any money. He scrounged up the last little bit of money he had to give me what I had requested earlier in the day. And he didn't even buy beer for himself. He could have not bought me any bananas and bought the beer. I mean, beer in the DR is very cheap for like a can. Like it's, you know, he could have not bought the bananas and bought the beer instead. And he didn't do that. And I didn't have to tell him. And I didn't have to bitch at him. And I didn't have to degrade him. I didn't have to do any of those things that in the past I've had to do with people, or at least I thought I had to. I mean, I, you know, I've done that. I've done that to men. And um, I think some of them deserve to hear me do that because they never had an intention of wanting to care for me and, you know, put me high on their list of priorities or make me their first priority. Um, so clearly that's why I have these types of triggers because of my past experiences. But um, the scripting and the journaling and the rehearsing and getting myself into a state of gratitude really turned this particular situation around for me that day. It was, it was good. Um, so the next thing that came up for me after, you know, this whole thing finished and I got the bananas and I got the happy man that was happy he was providing for me and he sacrificed for me and, you know, I didn't have to get into an angry state to get what I wanted. And, you know, I got all the bases that covered all the things I wanted. I wanted to feel provided for. I wanted to feel like I was his priority. I wanted to see him sacrifice. I wanted to see him in that very satisfied state he gets into when he knows he's done right by me. You know, that creates a really nice relationship between a man and a woman. And I did experience some guilt, of course. Oh, um, I did experience some guilt because I'm not all the way healed. You know, people like me who've come from my history generally feel a lot of guilt, a lot of guilt, a lot of shame, a lot of unworthiness. So there were a couple moments there, like when I saw him you know, scrounging for change. Like I had money in my purse. I could have just, you know, fixed the situation and just paid and, you know, bought him beers and, you know, made it, you know, smoothed everything over. 
that's who I used to be a long time ago, but that doesn't leave room for the opportunity of him being able to provide for me. That doesn't leave opportunity for me to grow emotionally, okay? To avoid like pain and shame and guilt, I would have just taken on the masculine role so I wouldn't have to feel the discomfort and he wouldn't have to feel the discomfort. But when you take that away, you also take away opportunities for growth. You also take away the opportunity for him to figure out how he's going to fix the situation and then feel really proud of himself. Now, it's the same reason like why when you have a little child in front of you that is like kind of struggling to tie their shoes, you don't just jump in and tie their shoes for them every time. You sit by them and you love them and you support them and you give them maybe a little bit of help sometimes, but you're there to like guide them through it. You're there to like be an emotional support while they figure it out. And then when they figure it out, they're so proud of themselves. If you do it for them every time, they never get to be proud of themselves and you're robbing them of that opportunity. Especially when it comes to like male female relationships, like you're robbing them and you're robbing you. So this is another thing that I'm learning about and, I, and I'm experiencing and I'm practicing in real life and I see the value in it. Like how good it is for me and how good it is for him. And just, um, you know, that's uh, one of the things I observed. And then this whole situation made me look more deeply into, into myself and why did I get so afraid when he said I had to buy the bananas myself? That really got me thinking like why was I so afraid why did that bother me so much why was I so afraid that he was tricking me that um, you know he's been providing for me for all these months but then as soon as the ring goes on my finger now all of a sudden he doesn't want to provide now he's trying to like slowly back away from the provider role that clearly is feedback to me that that I'm still in lack mentality to some degree. If I was no longer in that poverty mentality, that lack mentality, if that was completely cleared out of my subconscious mind at this point, I wouldn't have been triggered by that. I got triggered because I got afraid because yeah, you know, I'm being provided for. That gives me a nice feeling of security. But then all of a sudden that trigger came and that was a threat to my security. That was a threat to me that the providing is going to end. It's going to be finished. You think you're safe right now? Well, we're going to pull the carpet out from under you and you're not going to be safe anymore. This was all a big hoax. It was just, you know, to tease you and make you think you have security now, but then we're going to take it away. So clearly, I still have a lot of fear around that or I wouldn't have had that trigger. That would not have even occurred to me. But I got all scared and I like, I wanted to like flip out on him and start like ripping him a new asshole and saying all kinds of mean things like, oh, da, 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 you just put this ring on my finger because, you know, you just want to be lazy. You just, you know, you figure that if you got engaged to me that, you know, I'm going to let you slide now and now you're not going to have to take me anywhere or spend any money on me and we're just going to sit in the house every single night while you use my body and my time and, you know, getting engaged does not mean that, you know, now life is supposed to be easier for you. You know, I wanted to say all these things and um, that was the headspace I was in initially until I did the inner work and 
I started looking at things differently and I got into a better vibration. And once I got in the better vibration, things just started to naturally fall into place. I didn't even have to say anything to him. He went on his own and just provided for me. Why? Because he could feel my love. He could feel my gratitude. And when a man feels those things, what does he want to do for a woman that is giving off those kind of vibes? He wants to take care of her, right? <laughs> when somebody is loving you and having gratitude, what you want to do is you want to find a way to like provide for that person, to love them back, to give them what they need, even if it means you have to go without something. So, um, and I'm assuming some of, um, you ladies are, that's not a fart. That's my foot on the bench. Okay. I don't normally fart in videos. I did once and I never posted that video, but, <laughs> um, so some of you are wondering why, like, why is she even dealing with a poor man? Like, why wouldn't she just stop talking to him and move on to a wealthier guy? Okay. If she wants bananas and money, well, I already have wealthier guys in my rotation. I already have money that is coming to me. You know, I already have that and there's more here for me at this point. Okay. I've been in the money game for a long time. I've been getting money from men for a long, long time. And in the beginning, this was about money and survival and being in lack and scarcity. And I had to be in survival mode and I had to be ruthless. I had to be a lot of ways to get my survival needs met. Now I'm not so much in survival anymore. Knock on wood. Thank, thank you, God. Thank you, God. I'm not in survival mode right now. And I know I say this humbly because you never know what's going to happen. That could happen again. I hope to God not, you know, that I prepared myself so that these things won't happen to me. You know, um, I've made certain decisions with my money and, you know, certain choices in life that put a nice layer of security, like a nice safety net for me. You know, I'm still working on, on all these things, but I'm in a different situation now than I was back then when everything had to be about money because I needed money really badly. Um, it's not so much that now, now that I'm not in survival mode, I'm finding other things of value. Okay. Once you have a roof over your head and food and the basic necessities of life, plus a little bit more, and it's been consistent for a long time, you stop living in the mentality, you know, the gold digger, you know, the complete gold digger mentality. There's other things that are also gold to you other than money. And for me, at least where I am in my journey right now, okay, and I completely respect and understand the gold digger mentality. It is necessary, especially when you're coming from a, from a very low place of self worth when you've been rolled on and taken advantage of and you know you've been hurt and used many times the best place we can go is to gold digger mentality because that's the only way we can flip it around and not be a doormat anymore so i think this straight up gold digger mentality was a really important part of my journey. And I know it is for a lot of you too. It, you know, sometimes it's the way it has to be. But, um, 
I'm at a different level right now. Okay, I still believe in so many of the principles of the gold digging lifestyle. I believe in so much of that. But I'm also on a little bit of a different page because I know I can gold dig. I know how to do it. I'm, I'm confident that I'm really good at it. And I mean, you know, I'm not a complete master at it, definitely not. I mean, I've, I've done okay for myself, but I know women that have blown me out of the water. Not that many of them, but there are a few that I know of that have done even better than I've done. I have a lot of respect for them. Okay, so enough about that. Um, what I want to say is that um, I'm at a journey right now and a life journey where I've reached another level. I'm in a place now where I, I've seen I've seen the value in the energy of a provider male and I've realized and I've realized this through the experiences I've had with gold digging right I have been with all different types of men in relationships and friendships in the sugar relationships and I have realized 100% that a spender and a provider are two different things. They're not the same. I used to think it was the same thing. A guy with a lot of money who spends it on me, he's a provider. <laughs> and no, he's not. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Now that I have enough to be out of survival mode, I'm valuing so much more the heart of a provider man, no matter what amount of money he has, he's coming towards me with provider energy, which is basically, he may not have all the money in the world, he may not be rich, he may barely have enough to take care of himself, but he's still putting you as his top priority. If he has claimed you as his woman, he has agreed to himself and to you and to God or the universe, whatever it is you guys believe in, that you are now his responsibility. And he gratefully and happily wants to be responsible for you because it fills his heart with joy. And he would rather have that feeling than the feeling of providing for himself. He knows that certain things that he needs, they can wait because he's a man. And sometimes that's what men have to do. And they're okay with it. They actually like that feeling. They like that feeling because they get to be heroes and they get to provide. So that mentality, that energy coming from a man and I've learned this through my own experiences by being with all different kinds of men, is that that energy, that's what love feels like to me. That's how I feel loved, okay? I have had men with a lot of money give me all kinds of money, pay all my bills, give me stacks of cash, buy me nice things, take me traveling, like all kinds of things, okay? But at the end of the day, what I have also seen is men that did all that for me, even for years at a time, when things went south in their life financially, whether it was, you know, through a court case or a divorce or losing a job or making some bad investments where they lost their money, certain men that were giving me all that tons of money no longer were trying to take care of me. They were still putting their own needs before mine. At the end of the day, I realized these men only wanted to provide for me 
if it didn't hurt them, if it wasn't inconvenient for them, if they were able to do it, they would. But how about when they weren't able to? What happens then? Well, I know I'm a mother of three grown children. There were plenty of times in my 25 years of being a mother, for many of those years on my own, there were times I really didn't have the money. I didn't have a way to take care of them. What would be the first thing to go, okay? If I literally had to choose between feeding myself or feeding them, I would feed them because my love for them ran so deep. My sense of responsibility for them ran so deep that I would gladly not feed myself to make sure I could put food on the table for them, okay? That's how I know what this love is supposed to feel like. If I could have that love for my children, that's the love I want from a man. Even if he is dead ass broke and doesn't have a pot to piss in, I want that kind of love. I want that kind of love to be put on me, okay? Maybe some people think I'm asking too much or maybe that's you know not reasonable for me. That's what I like, that's what I desire. If I am capable, if I am capable of outputting that type of love, that's the kind of love I want to be able to receive back and I don't think I should have to settle for less. Okay? If somebody doesn't have that kind of love for me, then that's not the person that is truly in love with me. Okay? And yes, I love money. I love stacks of cash and trips and bills being paid and, and all that stuff. All that stuff is great and wonderful. But there is truly nothing on this earth like the type of love that a parent has for their child or that like, well, for a parent, it's usually a mom who loves her children that much. I mean, some men to some degree, at least in my experience, um, I've seen more mothers giving that type of love. Um, and I think there are some men that love their women like that. And usually the men that love their women like that also love their children like that too. But um, so to me, that's what love feels like and <clears throat> I still love being loved with money for sure. But I, but I have also seen that sometimes it looks like you're being loved with money. But that's only while it's convenient and painless for him. A man that has millions of dollars can spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on you in one year. You're going to feel so loved by that. But what happens when he's not a millionaire anymore? And he doesn't have enough to live the lifestyle he wants for himself. So then he cuts you off instead of downgrading his own standard of living to still provide for you. He just cuts you off because he doesn't want to, you know, be uncomfortable. You know, he doesn't want to live in a smaller house or drive a cheaper car or eat less expensive food or stop going on six vacations a year. You know, he doesn't want to stop doing any of that. He'd rather just not take care of you anymore because he still wants to live a certain quality of life for himself. That's when you know he was just a sugar daddy, that he was, he was never really your man. He's not your boyfriend. He's not your husband. He's not even husband material. No. And those kind of guys are fine and they serve their purpose, but don't get confused about the two, okay? And I know it's hard, especially if you're just starting out in the, you know, the sugar lifestyle, especially if you're young, it's hard to tell the difference between a true provider male and just a true spender. 
sometimes we learn the hard way too. You know, I learned the hard way because I was very in love with this particular man years ago. And, um, you know, I think he thought he was in love with me too. He was just in lust with me. He was in lust with me and having an amazing time. And I was in love with him because I had never been provided before like that. So to me, I'm like, wow, he must really love me. Look at all the things he does for me. But then some bad things happened with him financially. He lost a bunch of money. He wasn't making the same type of money anymore. And um, all of a sudden I started to notice like he was really prioritizing himself all the time and not me. It was like very shocking to me because years went by where he took really great care of me financially. And you know what? It's easy to be in love like that. It's easy to be in love when there's so much money around all the time. He will wine you and dine you and always be in a great mood and you'll always be in a great mood because you're being spoiled and pampered. But when life gets real, when shit gets real, then you see the true colors and you get to find out how much that person really loves you and really cares about you, okay? So um, I'm not saying stay away from rich men. <laughs> no, you should still be around rich and wealthy men. Of course, of course you should. But I'm also not saying just, you know, go to poor men because they're all gonna love you. A lot of poor men are not gonna love you either. Absolutely not. They're gonna use you and abuse you and take your money and use your body. You know, don't do that either. If you're looking for a lifelong relationship, I would definitely say you can find somebody who is wealthy and has a provider heart. So you know if he ever loses his wealth, he's still going to be a provider for you. He will still put you and whatever children you guys may have together or whatever children you come into the relationship with, that even if his money decreases, He's still going to feel like he needs to be responsible for you. He will figure out a way. He will downsize the standard of living. You know, he will sacrifice things that he's used to having for himself to make sure that his priorities are taken care of first. And his, his woman and his children or his stepchildren need to be the first priority. Okay, so if you're looking for an actual relationship, look for somebody with wealth and a provider heart at the same time, okay? This video has gotten a little bit off track, but I think you guys understand what I'm trying to say here and how, you know, the, how this video, you know, is about that too. Okay. And, um, all right, so what I am getting out of this experience with this poor, you know, this technically financially poor man, is um, if I just leave him and just, you know, get some other wealthy man on my roster, I'm never going to have to deal with these triggers. When you're always with wealthy men, you never have to deal with your triggers on self-worth, uh, lack and scarcity. If you came from a poverty lifestyle, you know, you grew up in a poverty family and you have a poverty mind. If you just jump from the poverty mind into gold digging and then you meet some wealthy guys and they're spending all this money on you. Yeah, you're going to feel great on the surface for a while, but those wounds are still inside of there. And that poverty mind is still lurking inside of there and the lack mentality and the scarcity is still inside there and it's going to come up at some point again. And for me, it happened a couple days ago with the whole banana situation. You know, that was my trigger. That was, that brought that up to the surface. This is an unresolved issue. And if I keep running away from this issue, okay, this is not the first time this has come up for me. This issue comes up for me, okay? The poverty wound and the self, self worth wound come up. They keep coming up in all areas of my life, in all different relationships with different people. And if I just keep avoiding it by, well, I'll just 
kick out this guy and get another wealthy man that's just going to spoil me and pamper me, I'm never going to have to deal with it. It's just I keep pushing it aside and pushing it aside and pushing it aside. These are wounds I want to deal with. I want to resolve these triggers. I want to become a better version of me. Yes, I still want wealthy men, of course, but I want wealthy men and I want their money and I want to be healed inside. I want to be healed inside. I don't want these triggers lurking inside of me and staying there just like waiting for their next opportunity to come out and, you know, try to make me learn the lesson. Okay, this is a lesson for me and I want to take it and this particular man that I'm in this relationship with, this poor man that didn't have the money the other day, that was my opportunity to work on this trigger and now I understand where this is coming from. It's about not fully understanding how to get myself into a space of gratitude and not fully understanding that being in this space of gratitude is what makes me vibrate on that frequency. This is a very valuable information that I can use in all areas of my life. And it highlighted, it put a spotlight back on the fact that I still have inner work to do around poverty mentality, around scarcity, around lack around me feeling secure, okay? These are still things I need to work on and that was highlighted for me the other day. And um, I wanna feel abundant no matter what is going on in the outside of me. I wanna feel abundant no matter who's paying for me, You know, who can afford to, who can't, who might just not think I'm worthy enough to buy bananas for, like none of that should matter. It should not matter what they're thinking, why they're saying yes, why they're saying no. None of that should matter. What should matter is that the voice on the inside of me is louder than the voices on the outside of me. And if you guys follow uh, Demartini, then you recognize that phrase, okay? But that's, I, I want to master myself, my emotions, and my life. And that, that is my goal here. My goal used to be just live in survival mode and get the money, get the money, get the money. And there's nothing wrong with that. At that time, that's what I needed to do. But now I'm in a different time of my life. And now what I want to do is get my triggers, get my triggers, get my triggers. I want to personally develop. I want to get to my next mental and emotional level in life. I want to be the more evolved version of me. And working through these triggers and figuring myself out is how I'm, I'm going to get there. And at some point, I'm going to be the type of woman that it doesn't matter who's giving me what money, who's providing security for me, who is loving me with their masculinity, that won't matter. Because I will be so solid inside of myself that they can give me that or they cannot give me that. And I'll be unaffected. Because all my providing and all my security is coming from myself, it's coming from God, it's coming from the universe, it's coming from this magic inside of me, not from another human being, okay? Can't rely on other human beings for this because human beings have feelings, okay? They have thoughts and feelings and anything that operates on their thoughts, and their feelings and their emotions is not a stable source, okay? <laughs> it's, people have the right to change how they feel, what they're doing, what they think. People grow and evolve and change every single day. So if you're depending on another human being to provide this for you, you're always going to feel insecure because human beings are going to change. No human being stays exactly how they are their entire life. So... Don't look for your security from another human being, okay? If that makes any sense, okay? The ultimate security is going to come from fixing yourself up inside, from developing your heart, your spirit, and your mind. 
And the other thing that um, occurred to me during this whole banana experience, <laughs> banana experience, it sounds so stupid. I've said banana like 10 million times the past couple of days. Um, what I liked is that when I was initially triggered by this, I could only see like one side of the story I could not feel like my gold digging mindset was blocking me off from seeing the situation from the male perspective. Like I really, I was being really stubborn in my mind and I did not want to see any other way other than what my brain was telling me to see. My brain was becoming very defensive. I was very afraid. Um, I was going back into lack and poverty mentality. And um, I wasn't, able to see at the time the male version of the story okay the male version of what happened was okay I can see it clearly now because I've been working on this for a couple days in the male mind what he's thinking is ever since I met her I've been providing for her Okay. I've never had her pay for anything. I've even invited her to come and live in my house with me, provide all of her transportation for her wherever she needs to go in the country. Okay. Provide her food and shelter, like basically all, you know, the basic necessities of life. And no, he is not rich, but he was still trying to find a way to fit me into his life where he could provide for me to the best of his ability, you know, for a man of his income level, okay? So from his point of view, he's been doing that the whole time. And he got me this ring, okay? He did that. And um, then one day, he didn't have any money that day. It was the day I said, babe, we need more bananas. When you go out today, pick up some bananas on your way back. And he's like, you're going to have to use your money for the bananas because I don't have any money. And my brain just went triggered and haywire when he said that. Um, as women, when we get scared, we get this like tunnel vision where we can only see what's happening right now in this moment. And we literally can't remember all the times he has provided, all the times he has been good and been right and pleased us. We can't remember, we get so scared inside that like our brain shrinks up and closes up and we can only see what's happening right now. Men, because they're wired differently, okay? Their fear level is not like ours is, okay? We get like that because we become really, really scared. We become afraid inside. And we turn it into like defensiveness and bitchiness. And, you know, then we start going into our masculine and we start like accusing and, you know, making all these like wrong assumptions. And we tend to do that because we get scared. That's how we manage our fear and protect ourselves. Men, they have a much higher tolerance for fear. I mean, men are supposed to be what? Like hunters and warriors, right? Like their hormones and their brains are made for fear. So they have a higher tolerance for fear. So that means when something is going down, they can still look at the whole picture. They can look at the whole picture, the whole relationship, not just this, you know, one little moment in time. They still look at the whole thing. So from his perspective, okay, I'm freaking out thinking that I'm about to be used and abused and he's not going to be providing for me anymore. If I give him one day off from providing because he doesn't have any money, he's never going to come back to providing and I'm going to be, you know, financially abandoned and homeless eventually. And you know, like this is where my mind is going. 
you know, like to all these kind of fears because one, I'm a woman, so I'm wired for that type of fear. And two, I already have a wound, you know, from being born into poverty. Okay. So I can only see this right now. He's a man. He can see the whole picture. He's looking at, well, I've been providing for her this whole time. It's just one freaking day. I couldn't buy bananas. Like, what's wrong with this woman? Just because I didn't have any money to buy bananas today, it doesn't mean I'm not going to buy bananas tomorrow. And I'm not going to keep, you know, trying to take care of her and, you know, paying for her and transporting her and protecting her and, you know, keep trying to get her to come and live at my house where I can provide for her even more. In my mind, all that's out the window. If I don't get him to buy these bananas today, that is proof to me that everything is over. He's never going to provide for me again. In his mind, he's like, I just like, I just bought this ring that I couldn't afford and now I don't have any money left so I can't buy her bananas. Maybe I shouldn't have bought her the ring. Maybe I just should have bought her a bunch of bananas and she wouldn't be upset right now. So, <laughs> oh God, oof, I tell you. <laughs> inner work is not easy and it's embarrassing. I'm like a little bit embarrassed right now even talking about this stuff, but I think it needs to be said because if I have the courage to say it and think these things out loud, then you know, people are gonna go on comments, they're gonna make fun of me, people are gonna act like, oh, you know, they're not crazy like me when half of you all are crazier than me or, you know. <laughs> At least I'm trying to do something about it, okay? So look. If I say it out loud and I have courage to speak my inner chatter out loud, then you guys can do the same for yourselves to give yourself a better quality life, a more evolved mind, better relationships, and just, you know, just a better overall experience with less suffering and more of getting what you want out of life, you know? And the better off you are mentally and emotionally, okay, and doing your inner work and becoming a more grounded, more aware person, the better it's going to be for the people in your life, you know, in in your life who you love, whether it's your children, your parents, you know, your siblings, your boyfriend, your husband, your sugar daddies, whoever you are sharing your time in your life with. The better off you are up here, the better everyone else around you is going to be. So, um I hope this video was helpful for you and um, talk to you later. Bye for now. So here's a picture of the bananas from that night. Um, when he got in the car with the bag, I snapped a picture of it and I was just like, I have to keep this picture as a souvenir of all the hard work I went through that day, all the, all the deep inner work I did. When he left in the morning, when he said he couldn't buy the bananas, I don't believe he was aware I was triggered. I didn't see him all day. I spent the whole day working on myself, getting myself into a state of gratitude, balancing my mind and my perspective, and getting myself to vibrate on the frequency of already having my wish fulfilled, already having my desire. And by the time he showed up, I was all fixed up and I didn't even get to respond. I didn't even get to say the things I planned on saying to him. Okay. I didn't even get to give him my feminine response. But what was amazing is that I still spoke to him without speaking to him. I spoke to him with my energy and he felt it obviously 
because he gave me exactly what I wanted. The bananas, the polarity in the relationship. I got to remain a goddess. I didn't even have to explain. I didn't even have to explain. So I took a picture of it because it was just, you know, a very special moment for me. (laughs) And uh, that's it, girls. Talk to you later. Bye for now.